And hello everyone and welcome to Siberia. Now Siberia, as we usually do here, is another point and click adventure game. Uh, Siberia was the second game, I believe, that was created by um, designer Benoit Sokal, and it was released in early 2002. So um, as of the time I record this, it's getting close to 13 years old. Um, Siberia remains a very important and worth playing game for several reasons. One, it has a very interesting story. It has an absolutely beautiful art style, and Kate Walker, the protagonist of the story, has a um, very good character arc. She's one of the better heroines in all of gaming. Well, I'm going to go ahead and hit start, so we won't have to sit here and look at this um, somewhat clockwork um, loading screen. There's actually a long um, cutscene at the start, so we can deal with that there. Um, and yes, there's a reason why Siberia is spelled that way. Uh, at the start of the game, Kate Walker is an attorney for a company out of New York, and she has come here to the town of Valladolid in France, because she is here to negotiate the sale of the Warburg Automaton Factory to the Universal Toy Company. Uh, these are the automatons, as you can see in this somewhat cheery looking funeral procession that's going by, that the Wahlberg factory has created. And there's Kate Walker there on the left. Um, the automatons are basically clockwork robots, although they don't like it if you call them robots in this town. They're automatons. But that's where we are and why we are here. And when these automatons rust in the rain? Or is that just me? And are the only people at this funeral automatons? Huh. Okay. Well, that's gone. Let's head on into town. As you can see, the art is beautiful here. Um, now, in actual gameplay, this is a cutscene. Kate's a little lower res than she is here, but... Um, like I said, automatons everywhere. Is that a beer stein he's got in his left hand? Okay. I won't ask. And here we are in the game proper. Now, um, most of the game, as you're going to be able to see, is these hand-painted backdrops, and we've got a mediocre polygonal count. Uh, Kate Walker and characters will be interacting with. There's a flyer over here which will talk to you some about the Vorlberg automatons and that sort of thing. But let's go over here to the counter. This is the hotel we're at. And hit our first um, puzzle of the game. Now, raise yourselves. This one's kind of complicated. You see there's a key here we have to pick up. Then we have to open our menu and get the key. Wind up this little automaton and then ring the bell. Yeah, that's Okay, enough. okay, I'm coming. All right. Uh, this is the hotel manager, the way we carry on conversations Hi here. Hi there. Hello there, ma'am. The way we carry on conversations here is we click on the person and we get a list of topics to talk about. Now, I'm not going to exhaust every conversation tree. I'll just sort of summarize what's going on because, again, we don't want to be here forever. The only other thing I will point out in this scene is that there's a person here in the background. You see this kid is doing something on this table back here. We'll get to him in a minute. I would like a room. My company should have made a reservation in the name of Walker. The company is Marson and Lormont Associates. The name is Kate Walker. Of course, Miss Walker. You are in room six on the next floor up. Thank you. And that's basically all we can talk about right now, so... I would like to see my room now. As you like, miss. 
is he expecting a high five or something? He keeps raising his hand up there. And, okay, well, there's not much there. Um, let's go get our luggage. I really don't have the strength to take this suitcase any further. I wonder who can help me. And my response at this point is, <sighs> Kate. She gets a lot better, like I said. She does have a good character arc here, and I think part of her seeming helplessness here at the beginning is to kind of indicate, give her a place to start from. But... Hi there. Hello there, ma'am. So, we're going to ask for some help. Could you possibly take my luggage up, please? Please do excuse me, Miss Walker. We have been neglecting our duties. Guests are so rare these days that we forget our manners. So you're the American woman? Is it true what people say? That you've come to buy the factory? Not factory. Anna's house. Hans' house. Excuse me? Would you quiet down, you mischievous little boy? Oh. I imagine our little town must disappoint you. You see, today is very sad for us. It's a day of mourning. Today is the funeral of Miss Anna. Momo sad, but Hans not dead. Hans long way away. Anna told Momo. Anna liked Momo very much. That's enough, Momo. Stop pestering the lady. Now go on, scram. Get out of here, you hear? He noticed Momo threw some stuff on the floor over there. What was I saying? Oh yes, Miss Anna. Such a great loss for Ballet de Laine, it really is. Because now that she's dead, the factory will close. But you're here to stop that happening, aren't you? Our future is in your hands, Miss Walker. What? Anna Varlberg is dead? You're just now getting that out of that conversation, Kate. Okay. Here's your room. I hope you like it, Miss Walker. I'll leave you to rest for the time being. You must have a lot of work to do. You know, the takeover of the factory is very good news for us here. It would make us very happy to see life return to our valley. If only you had seen Valadilen before. It was delightful. People came from all over the world to buy Vorlberg automatons. Ah, somebody has left you some mail, I see. Remember, if you need anything at all, we're not far away, Miss Walker. Okay, first of all, why did he seem surprised that there was some mail over here? He, isn't he the one who would have put it there? Or do they have um, house elves or something that deliver mail for them here in Bellowood? Well, whatever. Uh, let's look at this. And yes, Kate stores everything she gets under her jacket. It gets a little weird sometimes when she picks up things larger than she is and sticks them under her jacket. This is just repeating what we've already said, that this is a... Um, they're here to buy the Vorlberg Manufacturing, the Vorlberg Automaton Factory. But we probably should... I should sh tell Marson about the death of Miss Vorlberg. I hope this isn't going to get too complicated. I can't see myself staying here too long. As I was saying, we probably should call the boss and tell them that. Uh, the only thing I have to say is I hate to dash the hopes of all these um, local villagers, but the purchase of a small local factory by a big international corporation has never gone badly for that small factory. Now it has it. Uh, yeah, let's not break the news to it. And here we have a circa 2002 state-of-the-art cell phone. Hard to believe that was only 13 years ago, wasn't it? Okay. Well, let's call the office and tell them the bad news. Marson and Marmont, how can I help you? Can you put me through to Mr. Marson, please? It's Kate Walker. Hold the line, please. Oh, great. The game has put us on hold. Way to stretch out gameplay. Hello, Kate. So tell me, how's the case going? I've just got to Valadilen, and there's a slight problem, Mr. Marson, I'm afraid. 
Mrs. Vorlberg is dead. Ah, that's most unfortunate. But I seem to remember we made provisions for just such a sad eventuality, and we know that there was no heir. Yes, that's right, but... So where's the problem, Kate? Contact the notary right away. I'll get my secretary to fax you his address and an introduction letter from the firm. Very good, Mr. Marson. Right. I gotta go, Kate. Keep me up to date, okay? I just... <sighs> you know, for a... Under the jacket. For a top-flight attorney that you would send to a place like this, Kate seemed a little confused in that whole conversation. There's a lot of, uh, yeah, but, uh... Maybe they send their junior people out to, um, sign contracts. Uh, only other comment I want to make is that there's a lot of places all over the, um, game. Like, see this door here, how my cursor is highlighting it? No need to go down there. The game does that a lot. It gives you the opportunity to interact with a door that you really can't do anything with. So I'm kind of curious as to why the game even gave me the option of doing it. It would... The game is not that difficult. There's not a whole lot of really complex puzzles in here. Well, let's go get this fax that he said he was going to send us. And I'm going to probably having start having Kate run everywhere just so we don't have to see the slow um, her slowly walk across the screens because we're going to be doing a lot of walking for a while. I'm back again, Miss Walker. Okay, we can talk about a lot of different things. Um, Hans is um, Anna Vorlberg's younger brother. Hans is supposedly dead. He died um, as a child. Um, Momo is the boy who was in here earlier. Momo's kind of, I guess, simple-minded is a way to put it. Um, he's kind of, you know hangs around the town a lot. Uh, the automatons, that's what the Vorlberg factory is most famous for. They are these clockwork robots, essentially. Um, the One of the key features of a Vorlberg automaton is they have this unique wind-up key for them. And Anna was, Anna Vorlberg was who ran the factory. She inherited it from her father and she has run it for decades. That's all we really need to know about those. Uh, we'll talk about the mission. A fax didn't arrive for me, did it? Maybe. I thought I heard the phone ring. Do you think you might want to go and check? Certainly, ma'am. Immediately. Thank you very much. Okay, the fax machine is under the desk. The fax machine was under the desk, and he thought he might have gotten one. No wonder he doesn't remember putting mail up in her room. Uh, this is just the introduction letter to the um, notary. Again, we're taking place in 2002 here. Thank you. At your service. All right. Uh, yes, let's go talk to the um, notary. I'm going to go look around Valadie Len. See you later. As you like, miss. He, it's like he keeps expecting a high five or something. I mean, what's going on here? Before we leave, I'm going to do one thing. Remember how Momo was sitting here and knocked some stuff on the floor? Let's pick up those things he knocked on the floor. We don't need them right now, but we're going to need them in a while. And there's a second one here that Kate is conveniently standing on. And we need to look at this desk and see what he was doing, or this table. And I can't tell whether he was tracing these gears to make these, or whether this carving was already there, but just note this pattern of gears. And we now have four gears. Okay? We have a tiny, a small, a medium, and a large. Um, all right. We're done in here, and it's time to start running, Kate. I do think it's funny when she runs, she does this kind of little shuffle stop maneuver as she gets to the end. 
again, the backdrops for the game look really nice. I mean, you see the little animated bird up here. There's the um, automaton we saw when we came in. Um, yes, those are all hand-painted backdrops that we have a three-dimensional model in front of, but the game looks really nice. I mean, little animation things like the water dripping there. This over here to the right is the Vorlberg factory. We can't get in here quite yet, but this is where it is. I actually don't know what this building is. That's one of those buildings we can't get into. Uh, this is a little bakery and pastry shop. If we talk to this guy, he'll tell us that the um, mayor has declared a holiday today because of, um, or a day of mourning because of um, Anna Vorlberg's death. And he really won't tell us much beyond that. Um, there's a newspaper here on this. This is the notary's house, by the way. There's a newspaper here. Under the jacket. Okay. Where basically tells us what we've already talked about. Um, what we need to do is we need to go up here. I like the music in the game, too. It fits the mood very well. Um, now, this is another automatonic creation. And a lot of what we do in this game is going to involve the puzzles involving these kind of automatons. What we have to do right now is let the um, notary know we're here. So we need to get... I need to switch over here. This is the... Um, moat we just got. And I need to put that in his hand. This is our introduction letter. I need to pull this lever down, which lowers that head like that, and then this lever to raise it up. And the notary looks at it through this little periscope device, and I'm not sure how that is possibly efficient. But it opens the door for us. So let's go inside. Now there's stuff we can do in here, but we really don't need to do it until later, so I'm not going to worry about it right now. Let's go talk to the notary. He's in here. And we're about to have a very long conversation. So. Hello, sir. Miss Walker, I presume. Have you had a good journey? Everything went very smoothly. Thank you. Do take a seat, Miss Walker, please. So, yeah, like I said, it's going to be a long conversation here, so we're just going to let this play out. I imagine you are aware of the business that brings me here. Of course. I was waiting for you. Okay, if you were waiting for her, why did we have to go through the whole thing with the periscope and the letter? But okay. Um, again, we can get similar information to what we've gotten elsewhere. I'm just going to follow with the mission track. Uh, Miss Walker, I am afraid that the sale of the Vorlberg factory is not as straightforward as it first seemed. Whoa there. Everything was agreed. We'd obtained Anna Vorlberg's consent, and her death does absolutely nothing to invalidate that. Now, I have to be back in New York the day after tomorrow, Metro Alphotair. My client and I are impatient to seal this deal. I understand only too well, Miss Walker. <clears throat> there is a... an heir, Miss Walker. Excuse me? An heir? But Madame Varlberg never married, as far as I know. And in my last conversation with her, she absolutely never mentioned this detail. Miss Walker, believe me, I was more surprised than you are. Anna Vorlberg sent me a letter two days before she died. Understand, Miss Walker, that had I known about this earlier, I would have informed you. I shall read you the document in my possession. <clears throat> I am so very old. It seems that today life is slipping away from me more quickly than I imagined, and I fear that I will not be of this world to sign the takeover contract for my dear factory. So, I must make this confession to you now. My brother, Hans, is still alive. 
It would not surprise me if you find this difficult to believe, but it is indeed the truth. You must remember his death, his funeral, too, even though you were very young at the time. It was but a sordid charade dreamt of by our father. To him, the very idea that his only son should wish to leave Baladilen and abandon the family business was unbearable. When Hans left, he preferred to think him dead and make everybody else believe this too. He obliged me to bear this terrible secret as well. I repeat that Hans is still alive. So when I die, it is he who becomes the sole and rightful heir of our factory. Okay, I see. If Hans Varlberg is not dead after all, then I just have to sign the contracts with him. I suppose you've already contacted him? Where can I reach him? The second half of the letter informs us that Hans Vorlberg is somewhere in Siberia. I will leave the document in your hands to read at your leisure. Alright, this is basically the same thing he just read to us. Um, you can go through this if you like, but... Um... Anna Vorlberg had no further information to add? Unfortunately not, Miss Walker. I have told you as much as I know. The situation in legal terms is now clear. If you want to conclude this sale, you have to find Hans Vorlberg. Apparently there is a body lying in the town cemetery. There also seems to be some ghost wandering around Siberia. It seems you have your work cut out for you. Believe me, Miss Walker, when I say that I am most sorry for this regrettable setback. Most sorry. Great. What now, then? Perhaps you will find out more in the Vorlberg factory archives. You will find the key in the waiting room. My role in this affair finishes here with the reading of this letter. And now, if you'll excuse me, I must rest. You see, my health is not excellent at the moment, and my doctor forbids me from working for too long. I will not detain you for any longer, Miss Walker. Do not forget to close the door as you go out. Goodbye, sir. Okay, my main thing for that is that we were... the... No, under the jacket. The notary here tells us that he got the letter two week, two days ago. They have cell phone coverage here in Valladolid. They have fax machines. In 2002, we had the internet. Um, obviously, he could have sent emails or something like that. Why did they not bother to mention this until she got here? Did she not talk to anyone here in the two days prior to her being here? That's the key he told us to pick up. I mean, yes, I know, without that we don't have a game, but... So obviously this is what we have to do in the entire game. We are going to have to find Hans Wahlberg. That is the goal of this game. Now, um, I'll also point out that he told us to close the door. There's no way to close the door. Alright, so we need to go to the Wahlberg factory in the house and see if we can figure out... Where... Hans may be our hands, as he kept calling it. Hello? Kate? Dan, I'm so pleased to hear your voice. How are you, honey? Did you have a good journey? Have you settled in? It was long, tiring, damp especially, but I'm okay. Especially when you... Everything going as planned? Yeah, I mean, well, not really. It's not exactly what I thought it would be. You know, everything's so different here. Actually, while we're on the subject, I managed to free myself up from our lunchtime. I'll come and meet you at the airport. I hope the flight from Paris won't be delayed. We're expected at the Goldbergs about 8 o'clock. I hope you have the time to take a shower and change, my poor honey bun. Dan, I don't think the Goldbergs tomorrow night is really on. Don't worry, Kate. You'll be as perfect as ever. Anyway, you never have to wear much to look really great. Dan, Dan, I I'm going to have to extend my stay here. There's one or two complications. You understand? Kate, 
Honey, what are you talking about? It's only a measly toy factory. The sale isn't going through as expected. I I've got to stay a bit longer. Dan, you don't mind, do you? But Kate, Katie, you can't do this to me. I mean, it's the Goldberg contract. There's millions of dollars on the line here. I know, I'm sorry. You go ahead. Don't worry about me. I'll get back as soon as I can, I promise. Okay, I I I've got to go. I'll call you back soon. Love you, honey. Okay. Here's another convocation in poor Kate's life. The phone call we just got from got is from Dan, her fiance, who, yeah, if you picked it up from that, he's kind of a jerk. Uh, he wanted to take her to the Goldbergs, wherever they are, just because she could help him get the contract with them somehow. Yeah, he sounds like sounds like a real winner, Kate. Uh, so. But, hey, who, are, who am I to tell you? We're here at the Vorlberg factory, and we have this weird-looking thing. Again, it's a series of automaton stuff. What we need to do is we need to get that telescopic key that we just picked up at the um, notary's house and put it here. Then we need to wind up this guy. Then we need to pull the lever. And seriously, how did they get in and out of the factory when it was operational? Do the workers here have to do this all the time? Well, actually, there are no workers here. It's all automated. Automaton made it. What, whatever. Okay. Oh yeah, continuing the thing about, uh, there's stuff in all these different directions, uh, we don't need to explore right now, um, I'm just gonna go this way. Um, talking earlier about Dan, this is another part about how I said Kate has a really good character arc. Uh, yeah, Kate has some growing to do, I hate to say it, but... But that's okay. The door is locked, but I've still got to get in there. Yes, we're going to start our European trip with um, breaking and entering. Oh, that's another thing. Kate was talking to Dan about how everything was so different here. Kate, have you ever been to France before? Um, did they not send someone who knew, um, who had been to Europe before, to Europe? Okay. Uh, this door over here is also locked, so we're not going to bother with it, so we just need to look at this contraption. And you can see there's a way we can interact with it, but nothing we can do. The door is locked, but I've still got to get in there. Yes, you've already said that, Kate. Um, we need to go over here. Now, okay, all of you who just had a panic at seeing a maze, don't worry. We don't have to solve a maze. The game is not that evil. Um, we can talk to this woman here. She won't actually tell us anything that we don't already know. What I have to do is I have to go down this little side path here. And there's a gate here, but there's also a side path here that we can't see. Notice the game's tricking us by not letting us look down this path. That's where I need to go. And look in this fountain. Because for random reasons, a Vorlberg key is lying in this fountain. Remember how I said that the Vorlberg automatons had a unique wind-up key? That's the pattern of a Vorlberg key. And that's how you can recognize them. Okay, that's all we really have to do here. Congratulations, we've just solved the maze. Yay! Okay. But, you know, the Vorlbergs had this really nice estate. The Vorlberg factory must have been doing well. 
wonder why they were trying to sell it. Okay. So we're going to break into the Vorlberg estate. What we're going to do is we're going to get our Vorlberg key and use it to wind up this thing. Which extends that ladder. Because if you notice, there's an open window at the very top of there. And Anna, or not Anna, um, Kate starts her career breaking and entering. Now we can't do a whole lot here. Um, there's bicycles up here and books and all, but we really can't look at that much. What we need to do is go back over to this back corner. And all the clocks keep showing the same time here. There's a light bulb up here. Now this gets confusing. I turned the light bulb on and we're going to be back at the entrance. Mammoth, you draw mammoth for Momo? Ah, Momo, it's you. You scared me. Okay, I have a question. Was Momo in here all along, or is he following Kate around? Um, if he was in here all along, how did he get in here? The ladder was retracted. We had to extend it, and all the doors were locked. Did he come in through a locked door and lock it behind him? Did he follow Kate up here? Because he wasn't there when we came by earlier. <sighs> okay. Fortunately, we don't have to worry about too much with Momo. What are you doing in here? Momo want Mama's picture, like Han's picture. Sorry, I haven't got a picture of a mammoth with me. Take paper and pencil and draw Mama's for Momo. <laughs> you don't give up easily, do you? Stick it under your jacket, Kate. There we go. Okay. Uh, there's not a whole lot we can talk about here that won't... Momo, I've got to go now. But see you later, maybe. Alright. Now, we have a trick here. Kate's apparently not much of an artist. And Momo wants a mammoth picture like Hans. Well, notice there's this weird drawing right here on the wall. Oh, look. Hans, 1932. It's a mammoth. Hmm. Let's take the pencil and paper and basically trace what Hans did. Well, close enough. Okay. And I don't talk about this sort of stuff much, but... What is this thing coming down the back of Kate's jacket? It's really distracting me. I don't know what it's supposed to be. I guess it's her hair or something? I don't know what... It's the one thing about the character model, beyond that blank-eyed stare she has, that's like... What is that? <laughs> I mean, okay. Okay, let's tell Momo that we have his mammoth drawing. He's apparently ha Oh, he sticks stuff under his jacket, too. Everyone keeps things under their jacket. Thank you. Momo happy. Now follow Momo. Momo show his secret to Kate. Well, I guess he did come in through the window after Kate, so... Is he following her around? What's going on here? All right. Momo will actually not get too far ahead of us. So, we're going to do a little more searching around up here first. Even though there's all these things in this room, the only thing we can really look at is this old school desk. Where we have a bottle of ink and a diary. Anna's diary. Now, there's a lot in this diary. 
and I could we could read through all of this but what I'm going to do is just summarize it really briefly because see it's a long there's a lot here the basic premise is that Anna back in the 1930s Anna and Hans brother and sister they find a cave somewhere near Valadolin where there are mammoth drawings on the wall. And Hans sees a mammoth toy. And he goes and um, tries to get the toy, but he falls and hurts his head. And apparently he gets some sort of injury from this. Uh, they think he's going to be dead for a long time. He or think he's going to die. He manages to recover, and if you're wondering, I'm following Momo while I'm talking. Um, they think he's going to die. Eventually he recovers, but it's obvious he has literal brain damage, and um, he will never be quite correct again. And this bothers his father to no end. Uh, his father's angry about this. But it turns out that even though Hans has, you know, brain damage at this point, he has somehow become a genius when it comes to designing automatons, when it comes to designing toys. And a lot of the designs for the Wahlberg automatons come from Hans during this time period. But Hans learns that there is a place out in Siberia where the locals there still find and raise mammoths. He has become obsessed with mammoths because of the, um, you know, because of what he saw and the mammoth toy he was looking for. Here's the memo standing by this gate. And we started to talk to him, but he just left. Okay. Anyway, um, Momo is obsessed with finding mammoths, and he is convinced that these mammoths are somewhere in Siberia. His father is angry because, after all, it's um, Hans' um, skill with building automatons that is helping the Vorlberg factory grow. So, again, beautiful backdrops. And every now and then the game switches angles and it's a little confusing. It looks like we should have been coming in from this way, but we're actually over here. So anyway, um, Hans leaves and goes in search of mammoths. And his father's angry about this, and rather than admit that his brain-damaged child has left and run away, they put forward the story that Hans is dead, that he has finally died from his injuries sustained so many years ago. And no one, although he contacted Anna periodically, um, Hans has been missing since the late 1930s. So Hans has been missing for over 60 years at this point. And that's where we are right now. Notice there's an old boat here. There's a ore here that we can't do anything with yet. It's a shame this boat's been left to rot. Now it's full of holes. What's that little neighbor take? Okay, this is where Hans wanted us to, or Momo wanted us to come. So. <sighs> there you are, Momo. This is some walk you've taken me on. I've got to say, though, it sure is mighty pretty. Momo come here often. Momo like make splash in water. Okay, Kate, that's quite a walk for you. You live in New York. How, off, how far do you not be able Why to Why have walk? you brought me here? 
Mammoth doll in cave. Very important for Hans, Anna said. Cave? What cave? Where? Momo, not liar. Well, we didn't say you were a liar, Momo, but... Momo, I've got to go now. But see you later, maybe. I noticed that every time she leaves him, the caption says, I'll see you later, okay, but the text says, or her voice says, maybe. Just a minor thing. Alright, the cave is actually on the other side of this river, and we have to move it. <sighs> it must be broken. I've got to get a helping hand here. Yes, Kate, we know early game Kate isn't capable of doing them around. But it's not your fault, your just character is written that way. Uh, if you really care, um, the cave is over here. Let me show you. See, the cave is right there. I can't go that way. Because we can't wade through a foot... What is that, a foot deep, Kate? You're wearing boots. Okay. Okay. Let's talk to Momo and get some help. Momo, I've got something else I want to ask you. Momo, this mean? Can you help me, please? What do? Help me open the dam. Um, Momo strong. All right. Because obviously, releasing this dam and whatever it's there for is more important than you not getting your feet wet. But, okay, fine. Oops. Oops. <laughs> yeah, oops. Okay, well, that didn't work as well as we hoped it would. Let's get this thing. And watch Kate pick up this huge chunk of wood and stick it under her jacket. <laughs> I understand inventory in adventure games is an arbitrary thing, but just the fact that she will pick up an object that's three feet long and stick it under her jacket. <laughs> I'm sorry. I shouldn't make fun of the game that way, but... <laughs> the fact that they bothered to show the animation of her picking it up and sticking it under her jacket. Now remember there's a or here. I could use one of the oars from this boat as a lever, but how am I ever going to get a hold of it? Well, you could walk into six inches of water, Kate, but instead, we'll pick up the broken lever and use it to drag the ore closer to us. Ugh, that ore is all dirty and wet. And your point would be, oh yeah, right, your early game, Kate. What we need to do is we need to ask Momo to help us Momo, again. I've got something else I want to ask you. Momo listening. I've moved the ore nearer. Be a good boy and carry it for me. Momo say yes. I'm sorry, it just bothers me. Kate does not come across very well in early game, and I know that's because of her character arc. She, trust me, Kate becomes a very good, very interesting character later on. But in the beginning, the I don't want to pick up this ore because it's dirty is... Okay, at least he didn't stick it under his jacket. All right. He walks off with the ore. 
and we have to ask him to help us one more time, even though we could have told him then what we wanted. Momo, I've got something else I want to ask you. Momo listening. Can you help me, please? What do? I need a hand opening the dam. Momo say yes. Momo strong. And Momo will replace the broken lever with the ore we just got from the sunken boat and use it to open the dam. And I hope that dam wasn't there for some important reason. Momo very strong. Thank you, Momo. And thank you, Momo, you are no longer part of this game. Yes, that was the last we see of Momo, really. Alright. What are you doing, Kate? Okay, here we go. Now that the river has dropped, we can go into... See, it's now dry. We can go across and get to the cave. And in case you're wondering, yes, this is the cave where, um, oh look, mammoth paintings on the wall. This is the cave where Anna and Hans were when Hans was trying to get to the mammoth doll and fell. And there's the doll. So yes, it was real. Hans did see the mammoths, even though people denied it. There's the cave paintings of the mammoths. What'd she do with the mammoth doll? I guess she stuck it under her jacket. Anyway, um, I've been going on for a while here, so I think I... Oh, wait, we have a phone call. Hello? Kate? Is it you? Well, yeah, who did you think it was? Uh, I didn't recognize your voice, that's all. Must be the distance or something. So, spill the beans. What's Europe like? You lucky lady, you. Honestly, I never get that kind of break. Well, so far all I've seen of Europe is this tiny village, and frankly, they're not very hospitable. Uh, the whole case is getting really complicated. There's this surprise air I've got to find. I to Lynn who bumped into Joss and she had coffee with the head honcho this morning. He didn't sound at all happy. The client's meeting him tomorrow and when Marston tells him that the sale's not even gone through yet, whoa, you're gonna be pleased you're on the other side of the ocean when that bomb goes off. Yeah, I get the picture. But so, how about yourself? What's up at work? We lost the Sarah Lou trial. I worked five months on that dumb case. I remember. So, for a bit of therapy, I went to Boomies. The sale started yesterday. Wow, lucky. It was absolutely crazy, Katie. Absolute mayhem. You know that blue silk top I wanted? Guess how much I got it for. I don't know. 250 200 $140. <laughs> Just get yourself back here and I'll go down with you. <sighs> like it's my choice. Look, I gotta go. Call me soon, huh? I want a blow-by-blow -blow account of every moment of your great adventure. Get out of here. Look after yourself. You too. Yeah, I will. Yeah, this is Kate's best friend who is greatly excited about going to a sale at Bloomingdale's. Glad we have our priorities straight. But anyway, um, as I was starting to say when that mysterious phone call came through, um, I've been going in for a while here. This is probably a good place to stop because we have picked up the mammoth doll. I'm just going to walk us back into Ballad Clan here. And until next time, I am Dennis. And I am Tan Stoffel, the Paleo Gamer. And when we get back, we will pick up with Kate's great adventure in Europe, where she has apparently never been before from the way everyone talks to her. 
and we will continue our explorations of Valadolin and our search for Hans Vorberg. I will see you next time.